Hello. Let me take you through how I made myself some sleepwear sets during the last lockdown. This was my first take on a big project utilizing my leftover fabrics. It was a chance for me to experiment and figure out every stage of my production and then perform a long-term wear test for future improvements. Since this was filmed between June to August, I've had a couple months to test out these pajama sets on the daily. I've been monitoring the wear and tear and comfortability of it as well aside from the varying difficulties when it came to the execution and sewing. And I have a few comments, but I'll share more on that later. Given that I was experimenting a lot with my patterns and finishes, different fabrics and techniques were used throughout. Here's how it all started. So my home clothes were wearing out due to daily wear during the lockdown, and I could use a few more pieces to add in the rotation. Tops, bottoms, and shorts. But since I've never had matching sets like these before, I had to make some smart guesses based on the references I'd seen and follow commercial garment production finishes at my disposal. I really liked the piping detail on the collar, sleeves, and pants. The collar should shouldn't be too wide or too low, no lower than the mid chest, the lapel should be longer than the top collar, which looks to stop by the collarbone, and the two collars should be roughly similar in width. The short sleeves will be nice slightly above the elbow or mid bicep for me, and although I did make a pattern for full length sleeves, there simply wasn't enough fabric for two tops, so I decided to only make short sleeves. As for the pants, both shorts and long bottoms would have an elastic gathering at the waist, but only the long bottoms would get the piping detail, as I could keep the shorts relatively simple for home clothes. Before I could move on to pattern drafting, I made an oversized torso block and matching sleeve. It's essentially a t-shirt block, but I based mine off the other pattern blocks I'd made. I'd extend it out from the waist and drew a vertical line instead of creating that S-curve and lower down the armhole for more ease. Same thing I'd done before, after a while and testing had been conducted and approved, I transferred the pattern onto the cardstock and cut it out. And while my initial selection of fabrics was pre-washed and hung out to dry, next came pattern drafting and cutting. This would see many developments and changes after a few rounds of testing with some similar scrap fabric. My first trial run in this pink fabric was to troubleshoot everything, from the haberdasheries I'd need, the fit and fall of the patterns, the sewing details and difficulties, the finishes, etc, etc. All I have left is to attach the buttons to my little markings here. I did the buttonholes on the other side. These markings I made with an erasable pen which will actually um, disappear with some heat so I'm gonna put them with the iron. This was uh, some bad markings that I wanted to do to make changes to my collar. Again, same pen with a little bit of heat, it'll be gone. My machine has been acting up so these buttonhole stitches really aren't perfect but since this is my first, I don't mind. Those first major hurdles aside, I came back with my changes and tested it out again. It's slowly coming together at this stage and my patterns were roughly confirmed. Then I went digging into my stash for more fabric to test out different finishes for durability and comfort. I made a lot of shorts and long bottoms at this point and like an extra top or two with self lining. For some, I would overlock edges and press an open seam. Others, I'd done French seams. This is where I would stitch 0.5 centimeters, 3 16th of an inch with the wrong sides touching, meaning the right sides are outwards like a finished garment. Then I'd snip a little before pressing and stitching another 0.5 centimeters, this time with the right sides touching, so the seams end up on the inside. Commercially, the faster, more efficient way is to overlock the pieces together so you've got a seam and it's finished. As for the hem of the shorts, I had done bias tape binding a few ways, hidden on the wrong side, used on the right side for contrast, and folded in half to sandwich the raw edge. However, both shorts and long bottoms had a raised waistband that was folded down to trap the elastic instead of a separate waistband piece. This was my way to work with the fabric limitations. It's one less pattern to cut. I'd iron it down twice, then top stitch, leaving a small gap to pass the elastic through with a safety pin attached to the end before stitching the elastic together. At this time, stores and such were still closed, so the next part was my makeshift solution to making your own piping. I'll let Pass Grace explain. If you're going to use your own fabric to make bias tape or piping rather than buy pre-made, here's how you do it. For me, I've got some ready-made cotton bias tape right here and I've got some cording. So we're just going to change from our normal foot to our one-sided footer. So you'll see most piping has a basting stitch usually done in the same color as the piping fabric itself. For me, I'm making mine a different color. Basting stitches like these are meant to be taken out once the project is sewn and also so that you can remove some of the excess yarn 
yarn ahead of time so that your seam allowances don't get bulky. So we're just gonna do a quick basting stitch. So just set your machine to the widest stitch possible. And if you have automatic thread cutter or back stitch on your machine, you just wanna turn it off temporarily. Honestly, I should have like pre-ironed this, but I'm just gonna go by hand. It's not a big deal because most of this will be hidden. All we'll see is the piping. So I'm gonna extend a bit of my piping. And since my machine is magnetic, I'm just gonna Hold that cord right there so that it doesn't get in the way. Fold my bias tape in half, bring the edge over to the machine right on that edge here. And we're gonna sew up the entire length that we need. So I'm just gonna bring my needle down and just do my basting stitches. Just gonna hold it down, press it, and feel where the cord is. Here we go. Lift up the needle and the foot. Cut out some extra and cut away the extra cord because we don't need this either. Alright, and here we have it, some genuine piping. Moving on to the shirts, the self-lined tops were much simpler to assemble compared to their piped and unlined counterparts. Since the patterns were doubled, the inside matched the outside, and it was just a matter of stitching the same top twice, then joining them together. After that came the buttonholes and the button stitch. Finally, once everything was confirmed and ready, I started making the black and white set shown in the intro. I've just hand sewn some basting stitches along all the pieces that need piping. The top collar, the sleeve cuffs, the facings to the collar lapel, and then the pants. There are a few places that I've marked on this piping that I'm trying to avoid where, you know, there's a seam because that's just not pretty. So I've marked out my buttons as usual. Buttons on the right and then buttonholes on the left. I've overlocked my edges where needed. I finished off the collar already, so I pressed it and I have cut off the excess seam allowance so that I can press it nice and flat and it can curve nicely. I've folded in my seam allowances for my hem cuffs. It will just make it a lot easier later when I'm sewing. When it comes to sewing on the piping, the cord or yarn at all seam allowances need to be trimmed off to reduce bulk. I'd remove some basting stitches from the piping ends, push out the cord or yarn, and snip off about 1cm per my seam allowance and pin it in place before stitching. I'm sewing yarn in this bit since the white piping had a soft yarn inside instead of a stiff cord, so the piping wasn't as consistent as it should be. But matching my machine stitches to the hand stitch basting stitches would help keep it even. The main body of the shirt is sewn together, so the side seams and the shoulder seams need to be pressed before I can put on the collar, and then only put on the facing, which will be the bottom collar. So sleeves are sewn, I gotta press the seam flat, and then just have to fold it up and stitch is what it looks like. I'm trying my best to match them up because the end is where I take out the yarn so that it's not too bulky in the center here. I did unpick and try to get it as close as I possibly can. Where I started to rush a little bit, I caught onto this instead of here, which is unfortunate, but the inside, it's just nicely tacked like one millimeter out from the folded edge. You'd think after making so many tops, like four at this point, that I would get better at it. So one sleeve has been sewn, and now I have to go and overlock it. Then it's done. Just have to make sure there's no puckering or anything before I overlock it, because that is a bit harder to undo second armhole and i think i just want to mention this for anyone who may not be familiar with sewing the armhole or the arms i typically want to go and do one pass at it the head of the sleeve usually has the steepest curve which will then be the hardest to sew and usually what's recommended is that you do two basting stitches and you technically gather up all the ease and then you stitch it in a way that you don't catch it as a gather but once you remove the basting stitch you won't have any puckering on the other side for me i don't do that i've gotten comfortable sewing sleeves. I mean, I've been doing it for years at this point. So what I would do is I would curve it in the direction that it's supposed to fall. It's still present here that there is a lot of ease, especially on the back armhole. What I would do is I'd mark that center spot where it divides evenly. So for here, I just have to stretch it out when I'm sewing so that the curve lays nicely. For the front, it's not so bad. I can actually, if I curve it, towards the inside the right way it's supposed to curve later. I can easily flatten it out and it will go naturally to its curve. And I just mark the middle so that I know from here to here, I just have to be sure not to stretch it out too much or let the machine and its feed dogs take it up too much. Start my tack. 
and I will go a little bit and check whether or not both seams match each other. After this pin, we're at the head, you can see how much ease there is here. So I'm just gonna lightly adjust it, bring it in, and stitch. The pins also indicate that at the bottom there is the shoulder seam, so it's open flat. So I just have to make sure I'm not accidentally folding it to the wrong side. Flatten the head. And so, according to the curve. This is the bottom of the front sleeve. So that's where some easing is as well. I always stop the foot right before the pin because if it actually reaches it underneath, it can actually start to lift it and it will shift the fabric. Okay, and lastly, here's the collar. So I did a basting stitch and then I did my best to stitch in the ditch. And this is what it looks like on the underside. Once all the buttonholes and buttons were machine stitched on, it was time to wear them in for the long haul. After wearing them in for the last few months, I've stopped wearing the non-stretch pajama tops to bed since there's a lack of ease in the bust and shoulders to toss and turn comfortably in because I only extend it from the waist. The shorts and bottoms are on the daily rotation, but the shorts are just a little too wide for my liking. But the pajama bottoms I can live and sleep in every day. However, some are starting to split at the waist seams, so I'll need to mend those in time. But here's how I can improve a future pattern. I can slash down from the mid shoulder seam to the hip and extend this oversized torso block slash top pattern for more ease. And the shorts can be retraced from the pants block foundation, but this time with less extension on either side and without dropping the crotch. Before we end, I'd like to say a big welcome and thank you to all the new subscribers. Thank you for over a couple hundred subs for Christmas. Till next time.